is the new iPhone SE, and it is frustrating. Frustrating in a good way, but frustrating in a bad way. There's a lot of people that love the iPhone SE. It's for those type of people who upgrade their iPhone once every four years. They aren't looking for the craziest and the best specs, they just need an iPhone. An iPhone to take calls, to take great photos, it's a small form factor, it's cheap, and that's enough for most people. But at the end, they just want an iPhone that will last them a long time. And that's exactly what this iPhone SE is. It's everything that you love about the iPhone SE, but it brings new advanced features and incredible performance to Apple's most affordable iPhone. It's now got the A15 Bionic, 5G, better battery life, improved durability, a new camera, and so much more. Now you bring her around just to shut me down. The iPhone SE features the classic aluminum and glass design, now with the toughest glass in a smartphone. It's got the exact same glass as the most expensive iPhone 13 Pro. And that's amazing. We also get a stunning and very small 4.7 inch Retina HD display. It features True Tone, a wide color gamut, incredible color accuracy, haptic touch, and more. So everything that you look at, your photos, your emails, reading your books will look great even in sunlight. Now listen, this design is iconic, but I would have really preferred Apple to put the iPhone SE into an iPhone XR looking design. I mean, we've had this design for ages and I'm okay with with Apple refreshing it one more time, but again and again and again, I don't know, man. I really wish they would have changed it up. It comes in three colors, black, red, and now it comes in starlight, which is kind of like a more goldish version of white, and it will cost you $429. That is $30 more expensive than the previous generation iPhone SE. I don't know how I feel about it because one of the things that I wish the previous generation iPhone SE had was a cheaper price, but Apple did the total opposite. They just made it a little bit more expensive. So it is what it is. Yep, well, if that happens to you, you should be okay because the iPhone SE now has an IP67 rating, one meter up to 30 minutes, so you should be okay for accidental normal day like spills like coffee, water, tea, your grandma soup, you should be okay. We still get Touch ID for unlocking our iPhone, logging into apps, and my personal favorite, Apple Pay. Touch ID is not a bad feature to have on an iPhone. A lot of people make Touch ID seem like a thing of the past. Look, if you have an iPhone SE and people are making fun of you, you can make fun of them every time they do like this, every time, you know, with a face mask. And it's not a bad thing to have. It's great in an era that we're wearing face masks all day long. Now the iPhone SE might seem really similar in the outside, but definitely not in the inside because the inside is just mind blowing. The iPhone SE now has the A15 Bionic chip on the iPhone SE. That is the exact same chip as the iPhone 13 Pro. So if you're upgrading from an iPhone 6, that will be five times faster. If you're upgrading from an iPhone 7, that will be 3.7 times faster. And if you're upgrading from an iPhone 8, it will be double as fast. So if you're upgrading from a previous generation iPhone, the difference will be huge. And not only that, Apple doesn't want you to upgrade this iPhone because it's got the craziest speeds and you can game on it, which you can do that as well. Gaming on the iPhone SE is great because you can have unlimited power like Emperor Palpatine has, you're gonna be the next Darth Vader if you're using the iPhone SE. The power is limitless, it's so powerful. But that's not the concept, and the people who buy this iPhone, they don't want the craziest speeds. They just want an iPhone that will last you a long time. And that is exactly why the A15 Bionic is here on the iPhone SE. Multitasking, opening apps, turning on your iPhone, all of that will feel incredibly smooth now but not only now, but a bunch of years from now, which is super important for those type of people who upgrade their iPhone once every four or five or six years. And that's super powerful. Let me know, let me know an Android phone that can do that at that price. I know you're looking at me, I know the Android fans are hating on me right now, but 
You tell me in the comments, an Android phone that is this powerful at this price tag. Keep on researching because he will not find it. There is two things that I love about this iPhone. One, the performance, and two, the camera. The camera on the iPhone SE is a super reliable camera. It's a very reliable camera during the day, full of colors, details, and great textures. It's a standard iPhone camera, and I don't see that as a bad thing. We had way too much fun filming this video. Look at the images and videos we shot on the iPhone SE. It was a lot of fun. That was fun, right? Drop a like on this video if you guys enjoyed the images. But here's the thing. The new iPhone SE has the exact same 12 megapixel camera as the previous generation, but big, but like big, big, but I like big butts and I cannot lie. Thanks to the A15 Bionic, we get additional features to the camera. We get photographic styles on the iPhone SE, which is a feature that I love on my iPhone 13 Pro. Samsung fans will tell you that the Galaxy takes the best photos. Google fans will tell you that the Pixel takes the best photos. OnePlus fan tell, will tell you that the OnePlus takes the best photos. Well, guess what? No smartphone takes better photos than the other. The iPhone tends to be more natural looking. The Galaxy takes more vibrant looking. The Pixel takes more contrasting looking photos. It's all about the image processing. And with photographic styles, you will be able to select the photographic style that you like. From standard, vibrant, rich contrast, warm, and cool. Select one of those photographic styles and every photo that you take will be with that photographic styles. So if you're like me and you like more vibranty, happier colors, well, you can turn on vibrant mode on the iPhone SE and your life will be happier because life with vibrant, life with happiness is better. We also get Deep Fusion, which optimizes for texture and detail in every part of the photo. We also get Smart HDR4, which applies individual adjustments for color, contrast, and noise to subjects and the background. We get a seven megapixel front camera to take selfies with, which is really not the best, and especially at low light, it's really, really not good. And I would have really loved to see ultra wide selfies coming to the iPhone SE. For me, it's a must have to take ultra wide selfies. I mean, if you're more than four people taking a selfie, you don't fit. I use it every single day. Every time I, I take selfies with my iPhone 13 Pro, I always shoot them with wide. So it's one thing that I really missed with this iPhone. And that's the thing. I would have really loved to see cinematic mode coming to the iPhone SE, dark mode. I mean, the iPhone SE doesn't take good photos during at night. So dark mode would have been amazing to have. How's the battery life on this thing? Well, the battery life has definitely been upgraded and you definitely notice it and it is an upgrade the iPhone SE desperately needed. Apple has added two more hours of video playback and you notice it a lot. Is it enough though? It's not, it's, it's really not enough. At least for me, the iPhone SE does not last me through the entire day. And it's one thing that I complained about with the previous generation iPhone SE, I needed a longer battery life. And we got a longer battery life, but I need, I need more battery life. I need an iPhone 13 mini. I need an iPhone 13 battery life, at least for me. That doesn't mean that everybody uses the iPhone as much as me, but just because the iPhone SE isn't for me, that doesn't mean that it isn't for you. All right, let me tell you the good and the bad about this phone really quick before I give you my final thoughts and who should buy this phone. The bad, there's two things that I don't like about this phone. One, the battery life, it just, it's just not good for people who use the iPhone a lot, for people who work with the iPhone. And two, the design. I really wish Apple would have opted with an iPhone XR looking design, especially in 22, 22, 2022. And the good, 
There is a lot to like about this iPhone. It's so powerful, the A15 Bionic, it will last you a long time. The camera, the camera is extremely reliable. It is super, it's got a really good camera. The colors are vivid, we get a bunch of details. The price, the iPhone comes at a really, really good price tag for a bunch of people to come in with the Apple ecosystem. It's small, if you love small iPhones, this iPhone is for you. So that's the good and the bad. Now. My final conclusion and who should buy this phone? The new iPhone SE is frustrating. As much as I hate to say this, there is a huge market for the iPhone SE, but the iPhone 11 is around the same price and has a cooler looking design, ultra wide cameras, ultra wide selfies. It's got a wide ultra wide display, but it doesn't have the A15 Bionic chip. And I'm not saying that the iPhone 11 is for everybody or the iPhone SE is for everybody, but the iPhone 11 is for people who are in a budget. But the iPhone SE is for people who wanna buy an iPhone that is reliable, that is good, but most importantly, it's an iPhone that will last them a long time. And if you're looking for a really good iPhone that will last you a long, long time, guess what? This is your next iPhone.